Hey teachers, I read every single comment that you guys leave here on my YouTube channel. And one question that's been popping up a lot lately in the comments is how do you get students to show their work virtually, particularly for math? And I know so many of you have moved to virtual learning and getting students to show their work virtually, it is a challenge, but it is possible. So in this video, what I wanna do is show you some different options for having your students show their work virtually, and then also give you some additional tips so that way you can be successful when you show these strategies to your students. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you five different ways that your students can show their work virtually. And this can work for math, it can also work for writing, or really anything where you need your students to show their work. But before we dive into those five different ways that they can do it, I wanna give you some quick tips. And no matter what way you choose to have your students show their work virtually, if you follow these three tips that I'm about to give you, I think you'll be successful and your students will be successful as well. Now, the first tip I have for you is to keep it as simple as possible. Remember, the purpose of having students show their work is really so that we can go through as teachers and check it to see, are they making any common mistakes over and over again? And if they are, we can help correct those mistakes. So if your students are consistently making the same mistake, you can probably catch that within just a few problems. You might not need them to submit their work for all 10 or 20 problems that you're having them solve. So to keep it as simple as possible, what I recommend you do is if you're assigning a bunch of problems, maybe just ask them to show their work for three to five of those problems and maybe tell them to show their work for the problems that they thought were the most challenging because not only can you go and check their work that way, but it will also allow you to see what types of problems are they struggling with the most and which ones do they think are the hardest and you can kind of reteach those types of problems again and again. The second tip I have for you is train your students. Most young people are good with technology because they've been accustomed to having it around their entire lives but it doesn't mean that they automatically know how to use a program or automatically know how to do something on a computer or a tablet as soon as you tell them to do it. So if there is a specific way that you want your students to show their work virtually, you need to explicitly show them how to do it, model it for them, and then practice several times. So that way your students know exactly what they're gonna do. This is probably the biggest tip that I can give you because if your students know exactly what to do, they're going to do it because they're not gonna get frustrated and then just quit when they run into a problem. And the last tip I have for you is keep a positive mindset. I know right now, a lot of us are taking on so much more work, we're learning so many new things and it's easy to get really frustrated and overwhelmed. But if we want our students to do these things that we're asking them to do and we want them to have a positive mindset, it's important for us to model what a positive mindset looks for them or a growth mindset looks like for them. All right, so now we're about to dive into the five ways that you can have your students show their work virtually. But before we do that, I wanna take a brief minute to talk about today's sponsor. Now, in my role as a curriculum developer, I spend the majority of my day sitting in front of a computer. And if you're watching this video, I have a feeling that you are probably spending more and more time in front of your computer as a virtual teacher. Now, when I'm sitting in front of my computer for hours at a time, I like to be as comfortable as possible. So my usual work attire usually includes yoga pants and a comfy t-shirt. But I have learned over the years that not all t-shirts are created the same and few things are more uncomfortable than a stiff, itchy t-shirt. Recently, I discovered Thread Tank, and their t-shirts are anything but stiff and uncomfortable. Actually, they're just the opposite. They're so soft and comfortable for working at home and teaching remotely. In addition to being some of the most comfortable t-shirts I have worn, I am also so impressed with the quality. They have not faded or shrunk at all since I've washed them. Another thing I love is that Thread Tank offers a wide variety of custom styles, including teacher t-shirts, motivational shirts, 
shirts to match your interests such as Stranger Things, Gilmore Girls, and Friends. Their slogan is stories you can wear, and if you look at the three t-shirts I just received, you can definitely learn a lot about me and my story. I'm an educator who loves Gilmore Girls and likes to believe that something magical is always around the corner if you're willing to look for it. For a limited time, Thread Tank is offering a special discount just for my viewers. You can find the link to their website in the description for this video. Be sure to use the promo code VESTEL10 when checking out to receive 10% off your entire purchase now through the end of the year. In addition to stocking up on comfy t-shirts for yourself, this is also a great time to stock up on Christmas gifts for your teacher friends and family too. All right, so now let's get into my top five ways for having students show their work virtually. Number one, provide students options on an assignment. In my curriculum work, one thing that we consistently find through data and testing is that the more options we give students for showing their work, the more likely they are to retain information. So I wanna show you exactly what I mean by that on an example of an assignment that I've created inside of Google Slides. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. So these are my math interactive notes, and this is the virtual version, which if you're interested in this, I have the link to the fourth and fifth grade math interactive notes that are in my TPT store in the description. But what I do to encourage students to show work on any of the pages that would require them to show work, for example, we have this addition problem here, I have incorporated a box and I give students options for how they can show their work within this box. So if it's easiest for them, they can upload a picture that shows how they solved the problem on a whiteboard or on a piece of paper. They can also use the text tool and type out an explanation of how they solved the problem. Uh, for certain types of problems, particularly when we get to fractions, I encourage them to use the shapes tool and model how did they solve the problem. They can also use the line tool, really any of the tools that are provided here within Google Slides, they're allowed to use any of those. They just have to come up with some type of way to show me how they solved the problem. But I love this because it gives uh, my students options and it encourages them to explain things in different ways. The second way to get students to show their work virtually is to have them upload an image. And you can have students upload an image to any platform that you are using. But one thing that I recommend that you do is if you're using Google, have each of your students create a shared folder with you inside of their Google Drive that says math work or writing work, whatever you wanna have them label it as you can. And anytime they are working on an assignment that requires them to show their work, go ahead and have them upload a picture to that folder so they know exactly where they need to upload their work to every single time and you know exactly where you need to go to look for their work. This is something that's really easy to do. Most students know how to take pictures on their phones or on their parents' phones and upload them to their computer, so that's really all that this requires. But you're probably gonna need to do a little bit of training like we talked about in this, the beginning of this video, helping students get that folder set up, share it with you, and then make sure they know exactly what to do. Now, another option for uploading photos that I've seen teachers using lately that I think is a really great idea is I've seen teachers have each of their students create a shared Google slide presentation. And for every math assignment they have, students are expected to upload an image to one of the slides in that presentation. And the teachers know that the last slide in that presentation is always the most recent work. So for everything a student does, they're gonna add a new slide and upload an image to that slide. Then the next uh, assignment they have, they're going to add a new slide to the presentation and upload the image to that slide. And then the teacher knows that the last slide in the presentation is always the one with the most recent work. The third way that you can have your students show work virtually is using Flipgrid. Now, if you have followed this channel for long, you know that I am a huge fan of Flipgrid because I think it is one of the best tools 
for engaging students, for you to share content with them, and for them to respond and interact with you. It's truly, truly an awesome tool. And if you're unfamiliar with Flipgrid, we have a whole entire series here on this channel all about how to use it. So anything and everything you wanna know can be found in that series and we have it linked down in the description. But what I recommend that you do is let's say you have a math assignment from your, let, I'm just gonna make something up, something from your textbook. So you might say in your assignment on Flipgrid or your topic, instruct students to complete problems one to 10 on page 45 of your math book. Then create a video where you show and explain your work. So students will solve the problems and then they're gonna create a video where they show the work where they solve the problems and they're also going to explain to you as they're showing the work how they solved. So this is also another way that is requiring students to explain things in different ways. Like I talked about before, the more ways you can get students to explain things, the more likely they are to retain that information. The fourth option for getting students to show their work virtually is Jamboard. And if you are unfamiliar with Jamboard, it's essentially an interactive whiteboard for students that's created by Google. Similar to the first option I showed you, with Jamboard, students can write or type to explain their reasoning. They can also use the drawing and shapes tools to create models. And there's also an option to upload images. So you can use this tool in place of slides or some of the other options that we've already discussed. So lately, I've been seeing teachers use Jamboard to write down problems or assignments. And then students solve those problems on a separate piece of paper. They take a picture of that piece of paper and then upload it to the Jamboard directly where the teacher had written the problem. The fifth and final option for having students share their work virtually is ClassKick. Now ClassKick is an online tool that I've actually just started using within the past week and so far I'm really enjoying it. It has a lot of the same features as some of these other programs and platforms that we've talked about such as drawing tools, typing tools, all kinds of different things like that that students can do on an assignment that you give them. Where ClassKick is different from all of the other platforms and programs that we have talked about is that you can actually see the students typing or drawing or working on the assignment in real time. And as you're watching them work, you can respond and give feedback. So this is a great way for you to interact with your students and provide feedback while they're actually working on the problems or on the assignment. All right, so there you have it. Those are my tips for being successful with having your students share their work virtually and the five different ways that I have either have personally used or have seen other teachers using for getting students to share their work. Now, I'm sure there are lots of other ways to get students to share their work virtually too. So if you're doing something different that has been successful for you, please leave a comment down below and let us know. I feel like when we're sharing our ideas in the comments of these videos, we're just inspiring and helping each other. So make sure to let us know if you're doing something that's working really well. And then after you do that, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It definitely helps this channel to grow and helps us reach more teachers. And it also helps you because you will be notified in your feed when all of my latest videos and tips become available. So until next time, happy teaching.